Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interview that we have, another community discussion with uh, Monero Space and Incognito. We have Andre from Incognito. I think we're actually going to do a full set of introductions today, however, because we expect to share this video in, in both communities. So uh, we can start on the Monero side, and then we'll move over to the Incognito side, and we'll have a lot of great con you know, conversations about what Incognito and what Monero are, ways we can... You know, we, we have shared interests, ways that community members might benefit from different tools that are out there, and then overall just learn more about the projects that are going on. So, uh, of course, introductions for myself. My name is Justin. I contribute to series like Breaking Monero. I'm also in compliance. I do really all the project management that the community will let me do, and then that, 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 you know, also help organize Monero space. Seth, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, my name is Seth Simmons. Um, I'm a Monero community member. I've been helping out in the Monero community work group and now the Monero space work group uh, when I have free time and just generally trying to learn, test out different things, both within Monero and outside of Monero, um, and try to help drive Monero forward as a, a tool. Awesome, Doug. Uh, I'm Doug, also known as NeedBunny90. I'm a moderator in the community and also a member of Monero space, and I'm uh, happy to help with this interview. Awesome. And of course, we really want to thank our guest, Andre, from Incognito. Can you introduce yourself too, please? Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, uh, I'm project lead of Incognito. Um, basically, I'm trying to drive um, like all kind of uh, innovation around the project. Uh, I, we try to um, uh, design some kind of products which uh, cannot be existed without privacy implementation. And um, yeah, so basically... Um, any kind of activity uh, like you see around Incognito, you point can point on myself. Yeah. Awesome. And of course, we would like to thank the NSA, which is our recording bot, for joining this session too. Um, they don't really want to introduce themselves. They just want to listen to this conversation though. Yeah. Um, let's, let's get closer with uh, NSA. We just... Uh, uh, be, let's be friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess, um, you know, first things first, would you like to introduce like what Incognito is? Like, is, is it just a DEX? Is it a, you know, a, a wide variety of projects? What, what is, what, what is Incognito? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. I, I, so I will try to cut uh, uh, my like words because I can talk about this forever. I will try to figure out only like the most interesting uh, like things about the incognito and people behind the incognito. I think it's important for people uh, who see or like who hear, hear, hear about us the first time. Um, so basically, um, incognito uh, is a blockchain protocol. Basically, it's um, uh, like proof of stake, uh, privacy protecting uh, blockchain protocol. Uh, currently, we um, it sharded uh, proof of stake. Currently, we have uh, eight shards. Uh, we have Beacon Chain. Uh, Eleven months ago, we launched uh, like MyNet of Incognito. Uh, actually, like thirty uh, first of October is going to be like the first uh, MyNet anniversary. We are like very young, like very like fresh and ambitious uh, like project in this direction. Uh, but and and we actually like so we launched MyNet, but we have um, like plan of like development until uh, like next summer of active development we keep maintaining consensus we keep maintaining network we improve in privacy and uh, like a lot of things around uh, and then there's like base basement level from the incognito and then there, there's like um, beside this basement level we have uh, like bunch of talents which can produce um, uh, which allow to produce like hardware devices and which allow to produce um, like software products basically like all our background if like software uh, e-commerce like startups and this is this is how we live and then when we find out about blockchain technology and then we like understood like the the, the potential of this we started build, building this in one part we built um like blockchain protocol technology itself we have nearly 20 people who are, like working full, full time on this and then we have uh, 10 people who work on the application level um, basically, we try to utilize this privacy technology to make something useful for, um, like, for users, for community, for crypto holders. Um, yeah, and then, and maybe also important to like highlight the difference between like most of the projects and why we like um, uh, like Monero way or like Monero vision. 
uh, you guys not trying to make like noise around, but you're just trying to like to deliver a useful tool and then to see if users like like it or not. And we use the same approach in, in incognito. So we we launch network, we give uh, people to try, we get feedback, we improve, and just keep doing interaction. Awesome. Thank you for the high level overview. So I guess, um, so let, let's start by focusing on the incognito blockchain itself. So on the incognito blockchain, you have an asset called PRV, as I, as I understand, which is the main asset on the network. Um, however, I believe you also allow users to like, send other types of token transactions, some other wrapped assets, um, which supports mm-hmm. other features of the network. Before we get into that, um, how about we talk about, or can you explain what similarities the PRV base network has with Monero? Does it use ring CT, you know, you know, stealth addresses? To what extent is it the same? To what extent is it is it different? Um, yeah, I think uh, in in in, the, in this perspective, uh, we also um, uh, like um, we was. Um, like in, inside the team, we were like like talk, joking about this, but we feel that somehow we like um, uh, I don't know, like we are like brothers or sister brothers and sisters <laughs> with Monero because basically, uh, like incognito, based on uh, on two researcher works um, uh, on crypto node and Omni Ledger uh, researchers. Uh, basically, this is the, the basement of uh, incognito network. Uh, so we implemented. Um, uh, ring signature like currently we have uh, we use like eight eight rings and we're working on bringing to the ten rings for for the uh, uh, like hiding sender uh, then we also use uh, still address to hi- uh, hide receiver uh, we we like did this the, um, the, we also have confidential transactions uh, confidential assets but this is still like ongoing on so we plan to uh, deploy this functionality like nearly beginning of next year. Um, as you mentioned, also on the uh, on the network, we have different types of assets, and confidential transactions will allow us actually to uh, to anonymize type of assets was uh, sent on uh, like through the network. Um, also, beside this, we um, like we have um, yeah, basically we have uh, we use like ring signature confidential uh, like. T- uh, Confidential assets still um, transact. Yeah, yeah. still addresses, confidential assets, ring signature, and CKP, and we mix it everything into the uh, sharded proof of stake network. And this is like why we like trying to bring some kind of utility here. Uh, and then PRV, which you mentioned, PRV is basically it's like a utility coin of uh, incognito network. Uh, Currently, there's like a couple usages of the network. So first one, you uh, have to have it to run uh, validating node as uh, other proof of stake networks. The second one, uh, which is quite important, uh, it's um, when we like built incognito decks and uh, we were like designing technology how to uh, execute um, decentralized swaps between coins like Bitcoin and Monero without uh, uh, maintaining dedicated liquidity for each particular payer. So we, we design it in that way when we use PRV as um, like middle transition part. Uh, and then um, like maybe later I will show you like in details. Uh, basically on Incognito Dex, you have all pairs against PRV. But uh, the advantage here is that you can trade like um, Monero Bitcoin directly without um, making any additional steps in this. So we uh, make some kind of cross pool uh, like swap uh, thing. Yeah, so a really quick question out of that. Um, you mentioned confidential assets, and I noticed when I was testing out the, I guess, how should I refer to the DEX? Would it be like PDEX? I think I saw that terminology referred to throughout, or just DEX, but I was testing that out and minted some PXMR to trade back and forth, and I did notice that the amount of XMR that I sent in was exposed in the public ledger when I looked on the block explorer. So that will change once you implement confidential mm-hmm. assets, right? You won't be able to see the amount or the type of asset that's actually being created oh. or destroyed at that point. Yeah, so there is, um, it, it's actually, it's an interesting question. And um, uh, yeah, the, the first thing when we, um, when we implement confidential assets, it will not be possible to, uh, understand what kind of like transaction happen on on the protocol layer, 
Um, the but the second thing, which question is still open. So we basically we have um, um, mint and burn functions uh, public uh, for the cross chain transactions. Let's say um, for, for with Monero, it's actually it's even like particular case which uh, uh, we like explore separately. But for public ledgers, uh, the point, the most important point is that uh, to um, uh, so anyone can verify how much funds is locked. Uh, like in decentralized custodians and how much uh, uh, like P equivalence is minted on incognito network. So, and always, I mean, if this numbers is equal, uh, equal, then it means that every assets on incognito network is backed uh, like by a real one on, on public. Um, that was like some kind of like security uh, um, thing to, um, for the, for the verification. Uh, in terms of Monero, yeah, I got it's interesting. Right, right now it's public, so we basically uh, notify, uh, like, notify. I don't know how to say. Just, in the Explorer, you can notify that how many Monero assets come to the Incognito network and how many went out. It also just uh, allow us to like secure the balance, so then uh, to eliminate like some kind of double spending in this kind of cross chain uh, thing. So do you always intend to make any deposits to or from any wrapped PRV type assets? So like, for example, in Seth's, Seth's case with XMR, where he took XMR and converted it to PXMR, I believe, uh, do you intend the conversion amount for that either to or from the asset in uh, Incognito to be a transparent amount? I mean, this is this is open question. This is the current implementation, uh, but it depends on on the demand. Um, again, because we came like mostly from like uh, like software e-commerce industry, we we make the implementation, we ask uh, the feedback, and then like whatever the feedback, we just uh, like making changes. I think it, it definitely going to be like remains public for uh, like public ledgers like Ethereum, Bitcoin, because there is no sense to change anything because you always can see the equivalent on like Ethereum, for example. But for Monero, it may be actually uh, even something even more interesting when you will be able um, like execute uh, like cross chain. Basically, it's cross-chain transaction, right? So you you transfer value from Monero network to Incognito network, then you swap this to uh, Bitcoin, and then you like uh, send it like uh, to the Bitcoin network. Basically, like same equivalent of value and different amount of tokens. So, in in this point, um, I actually need your feedback. Uh, it 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 may be like something interesting because I I didn't I didn't think about this idea before uh, like this call uh, but i right now i feel that it might be like something strong like you know invisible cross chain swap it's uh, i don't know yeah it me I, <laughs> I have one more question I, I think it's okay if we go deep on this one and then we can take a step back and, and like go over everything everything else um but i, I do want to focus on just visible amounts um in as a general topic for the incognito Deck. So we, we talked about how at the moment, especially with transparent chains, like it's obviously public information that money goes in or out because it's transparent to begin with. But Monero's case, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but you state in the current implementation, uh, you are able to see the amounts that people take from Monero into the PDEX or from the PDEX to Monero. At the moment, that's public information. Um, so if uh, I was to make a, an exchange from Monero to Bitcoin using the Uniswap types setup you have. Um, does it reveal publicly, like, not, not necessarily that I'm user A, it doesn't identify that I'm the user who made this trade necessarily, but does it say uh, someone made a trade from this much Monero to this much Bitcoin or this much P XMR to this much P, uh, mm-hmm. well, I guess PRV and then this much PRV to this much. Uh, PBTC. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I got what you mean. Um, it's not. Uh, I mean, basically, he, here's the thing: if you um, if you like bring into the incognito network, let's say 1,000 XMR, and then swap this 1,000 uh, to Bitcoin, uh, the same moment um, you in the current implementation, you can 
see these two events on Explorer. So basically, you can see that this Monero like was transferred to incognito way. And then if it's this kind of big amount, um, you probably can guess that this amount is related to uh, to the shielded one. But you will not have any proof that this shielding and uh, this swap is actually linked to each other. So, so and then mm-hmm. and then if you like, let's say if you, you bring thousand Monero, you swap it to uh, I don't know ten bitcoins, and then you um, you have this ten bitcoin bitcoins on incognito network, which is uh, still in the same level of confidentiality, like uh, Monero, like the, the the wallet balance hidden, uh, the the trade. Um, uh, uh, the, the transaction history is hidden. Uh, the like user like linked other addresses is uh, invisible. And then the point here, fr- from from p- Incognito's point of view, if you don't want to be like disclosed, you just should keep sending or transferring your Bitcoin uh, through the Incognito layer. Uh, then there is no way that someone is can link your way from the incognito swap and then like some like further i mean if, but if, if it's not visible though this this feels very similar to the the attacks that happened on uh, zcash's shielded pool um because y- y- since i assume your network is primarily being used for pass through transfers between different currencies uh you can fairly easily detect that a, a person that has put in a sum in and is withdrawing a sum out if those amounts are visible on chain. I'm, I'm not sure it can be hand-waved away that the amounts being visible and, and the thing is still private when the, prim- the primary purpose of the network is, a, is as a pass-through. Uh. This is the question. So, why a user should uh, unshield uh, their bitcoins? Let's say if you bring thousand XMR and you swap it to ten bitcoins, what are you going to do then with your bitcoins? Like either you, if you want, just store it anonymously. You store it on incognito layer. There's like no way someone recognize. If you transfer it to someone again, like you just use it. Uh, and um, like you transfer, and it's like remains like fully anonymous, so nobody knows where you transfer, how much you transfer, timestamp, like nothing. But you, you can't you can't say that. There's always metadata leakage on chain. Like I, I saying something is completely anonymous doesn't doesn't feel like proper advertisement. Like there's there's always caveats here. Exactly mm-hmm. which information is being transferred on which which of these trades, and how much of this is actually accessible from the outside. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for like correction. I, I, nobody can say that it's like hundred percent, especially like when this. Uh, uh, oh no! Like, uh, 100%, but you seem to be saying that it's a hundred percent. You just say completely anonymous, like it's like it's nothing. I mean, in this point, I I got I got I got your point. Like I I was. Um, Referring like to example, same like if you do like on Ethereum or public ledger, um, like from my point of view, the anonymity level, it's like, okay, uh, maybe I will not use the 100%. Anonymity level is not 100%, but it's not comparable with uh, the same action on uh, on the public ledgers. That, that's you, what I actually... Would, would you agree with the, that distinction, Doug? I'll, I'll, I'll allow it for now. <laughs> All right. So, um, so I, I, I just want to break apart the two different things here. So first, if you, would you, rec- I guess in your opinion, the, would you think it's a relatively high risk activity for a user to take, you know, any asset deposit it on the incognito Dex, exchange it, and then immediately withdraw a different asset from the incognito Dex? that there's a, a high probability that even if, you know, on chain, even if you can say, well, there are other decoys, right? That the amount of how much is deposited, the amount of how much was traded, and the amount with how much was withdrawn is public information. Um, so would you agree that it's relatively high risk to put money in and then immediately take money out? Yeah, if you, if you put in and take it out, I mean, uh, there's like, yeah, it's obvious. Yeah. Uh, from from our side, as just let's say if we talking about the incognito as privacy layer for Bitcoin, uh, our like goal and our vision is actually not be a mixer. So th- I think like 
th this is one of the uh, the mis like communication we got with our users because when we start building incognito, we were thinking it like something, um, some kind of layer which you just move and then you come back to public only if it's like like highly like required for you. I, I don't know whatever the reason, but if, if it's needed, then you can back. But we noticed like the, the for, for the last six months that most of users they actually they come in, uh, they make make whatever they want, they cut uh, they cut at least this kind of trace and then uh, like go out um, yeah and this this was like this was uh, like very interesting to know and maybe it, it also again maybe it might be a problem with communication from our side to the to the users which we uh, like trying to learn and try to improve in this way I mean to be honest like most of the users that I assume are using incognito are used to using like uniswap on ethereum and let's not kid ourselves and like obviously using any sort of very basic privacy feature is better than none at all, right? Like, so we're, we're comparing the system to like Ethereum type, complete, everything's completely transparent. Mm -hmm. And so it's good at least that the idea of, you know, a user has the ability, if they wanted to hold or transfer in the interim, that there's certainly more privacy than if they're doing on a completely transparent layer. Um, but if, if the user's intent is just to hop in and out, like as we've seen with, with the, uh, the Quesnel uh, paper on Zcash, for example, like, just looking at the amounts reveals a ton of information, right? Um, so uh, certainly we would, something we will need to tell uh, Monero users on on our end if they're uh, thinking about using the, the DEX is, you know, keep in mind the amount you put in is, is transparent and um, especially at the, you know, just to, just to be careful. Um, because if they pull out like DTC, let's say on the other side that uh, mm -hmm. they, they might know, well, this is the Monero transfer that, that you know, it probably or originated from. So, uh, okay. And, and then one thing I want to dive in on the, the transaction structure before we back up a bit, and I'll hand it off to Seth to, you know, ask some broader questions. Um, so for the specific, if a user wanted to make a transfer of, you know, PBTC, let's say, or, or PXMR mm -hmm. um, from, from one user to the next, would that look exactly like a PRV transaction? Would there be like just a, a tag that basically says like, oh, actually this transfer is for PXMR or for whatever token identifier? It has to be because um, as far as I understand, their Monero swap system is currently custodial. And I don't think that they could transfer ownership without n noting that it came from that pool. Yeah, so my, my question is not whether or not the custodian, but whether or not the transfers of... Like if a user sends another user Bitcoin on, on, within your incognito network at some wrapped asset, um, does that look the same as a PRV transfer? What's the difference between how these look? Uh, how do you distinguish them? Mm -hmm. Do they still have a ring size of eight that you, you know will be ten soon? You said, um, yeah. Um, so um, again, with current implementation, um, if you send uh, like PBTC or PXMR or like PATH. Um, on the like explorer, like the, like publicly, you can find information that uh, that type of assets was like transferred. Again, it's because like we like still under development uh, the confidential assets. Um, like once this confidential assets is uh, uh, there, it's like once it's deployed to the mainnet, um, there will not be is visible and not be possible to. Um, uh like and just to, to to verify what kind of assets like either it prv either it uh, uh bitcoin or either it's monero like transfer um and i think uh i, I just wanted like to, to the, the the previous one just highlight um one more like quite quite important thing that um we're not trying to it's it's i think it's important to understand we're not trying um come on the market and say that we are like building like next killer or like of someone like of something uh, like uh, one of the reasons of, of, of this kind of conversation is uh, to understand uh, like where sh we should move uh, and uh, like especially this kind of like um, like questions or points uh, which can highlight our problem problems I think it's the most useful thing uh, which I can get from this conversation so um, like this point, I like highly appreciate. So, guys, feel free, uh, especially if you like can put even something more painful. It's like <laughs> really cool for us. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm coming back to the assets. Like right now, um, 
uh, it's possible to recognize what kind of type of assets was like transferred uh, through the network. Okay, so yeah, just just to set some like expectations, right? Like we, our point isn't to just try and run around with a baseball bat and try and ruin everything, right? Like we, we have no intent of doing something like that, right? We're, we're not just purposely being rambunctious for the sake of it. Yeah. Yeah. Hard question. Maybe, maybe that's Doug. Maybe, maybe Doug does that. <laughs> but, 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 but everyone else, um, everyone else, like the, from my perspective, what I want to okay. make sure is that when we are discussing tools with the Monero community, that they understand what the protections are that they can expect. And also, of course, we want to make sure that uh, we have a good understanding of how incognito works in order to make those recommendations. And then, of course, that that involves getting into the weeds and some of the metadata things, you know, amount is the easy one. Um, but of course there's a bunch of other, like, what about privacy gotchas, you know, all the, all the gotchas. Right. Um, and, and we're, we're all, we're all obsessed in the Monero community. As you can imagine, that's all we think about all day long. So um, with that being said, I, I just want to set the, you know, the caveat and then hand it over to Seth for a, a broader question. I think it's okay for us to take a step back. I'm sure we'll get back into some of the specific network questions. Um, because we only touch the surface here. I mean, just very, very quick. I mean, if, the, if there's a uh, guys, even like uh, will be some kind of demand uh, uh, to dive uh, deeper into technology, I'm happy to bring uh, like our like devs as well. Uh, so then they they can they can they can handle like much more professional like discussion in in, in this direction. So, yeah. Justin, maybe we could talk to Howard. Do you think he'd be interested? I don't know. We'll see. Seth? Yeah, sure. Uh, why don't we take a step back? And I'm kind of curious about your design decisions for doing sharded proof of stake versus a more standard proof of work network. Um, I dug a little bit into that and kind of looked at how you're doing validation right now. Um, and I actually handle like physical staking nodes, that kind of thing. But maybe you can just give a quick overview of why you went with proof of stake and how how you've implemented that on your network? Um, I think the, the, the answer like is uh, like, like very very simple. Like we were like trying to find a way how could we like scale uh, in terms of TPS. Uh, let's say if we um, here is the thing: we are like making a bet that uh, probably like Bitcoiners will uh, will be hungry or like will require certain some kind of. Uh, privacy layer or like privacy wallet so it was our bet uh, then we like when we start like researching about the technology we basically uh, try to understand where like uh, market goes uh, what's like the, um, like the, the latest innovation but basically we started working in Cognito uh, May uh, 2018 and then uh, uh, like until um, the whole May we were like doing actually research in different kind of technology, try to understand what is like more suitable for us, and then we figure out uh, uh, in this particular like uh, design, um, which help us. We basically have like two two. It give us like two flexibility right now. Um, basically, we um, uh, can uh, scale in terms of shards. Like currently, we have eight. Uh, possibly, we can bring to uh, like fifty six. Uh, so we have like capacity and understanding how to bring it to the the, the fifty six uh, shards. Um, if there is like demand and re- like uh, users like like push these transactions, and the second thing which is uh, like the currently very like important for us and which allow us to um, uh, to build the decks and which allow us to build uh, uh, the bridges is basically we don't have uh, uh, on chain EVM. Uh, but we, um, I don't know, like we, we, we pre, um, basically like in s- simple words, we, we can hard code, uh, some kind of, uh, like functionality, like, uh, like PDEX creating like P coins, uh, like, uh, like doing cross chain transactions. Um, and this kind of thing can give us like some kind of flexibility, uh, and um, yeah, opportunity to make changes on the way. So the whole uh, 2020, we keep doing like development in this direction. So if there's no EVM, how are you actually handling the? Like, how does the Dex actually function? Is it a piece of software that your core dev team runs that users are interacting with, or is it is it something that lives on chain somehow? 
uh, we hard we hard coded it on chain. So this this is the, okay. the most in interesting thing. So we ha basically we hard coded like the the DAX. Uh, we um, hard coded template of uh, like minting uh, like P coins, uh, and uh, basically we we can hard code like the, the several like um, some kind of public implementation like uh, AMM based DAX. Uh, we which is already done the mint and pick coins is done um like the bridging functionality uh going on and then we also keep in mind some kind of um uh like template for like minting uh like stable coin let's say backed by uh like privacy assets like monero and PRV, for example so uh, privacy version of dai and 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 basically we cannot we cannot allow uh, like developers um out like layer layer two developers to build um, uh own pdi for example but what we can do we can uh, um, like predefine the template and hard code it uh, into the network and then when everyone will be uh, able to uh like communicate with this kind of like hard coded uh, contract okay so regular people can't deploy any kind of like smart contract to incognito right now, but you're deploying set contracts for people to interact with that run things like the DEX, that kind of thing. Some kind okay. of templates, yeah. Okay. Um, and then another quick question about uh, your proof of stake implementation. Um, and this one's a little bit like focused on some areas that I see as issues with proof of stake, but because there was a pre-mine and because you, from what I read, and this could be wrong now, so correct me if, if it's incorrect, but from what I read, you also have set slots for your own validators. Um, are you worried or are people in the community worried about the percentage of the network that's controlled by the core dev team mm -hmm. to become overwhelming and make it impossible mm -hmm. for regular people to really be securing the network? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I think it's it's very, uh, I, I mean, I, I like this question. It's um, uh, like, allow you to, um, like, share like like bigger picture of like what's going on here uh so the first the firstly the reason like of, like why we hold in fixed slots right now is just which i mentioned before because if we uh design uh like privacy stable coin which uh uh like will be able to mint within any kind of uh, p coins and we will need to uh hard code this smart contract basically we need to have like majority to uh to deploy it and then that was um so that's also important to share that it was Actually, like the public statement when we uh, like released the the mindnet last uh, October, uh, and then we say, okay, here's guys the, the roadmap how we plan to uh, change like upgrade the consensus upgrade like to bring confidential assets, and then during the uh, 2020 and beginning of 21, we plan to finish all kind of uh, deployment and release the network. From uh, like the core team personal, like from my personal point of view. Uh, my goal is like to release it as fast as possible. Uh, until this kind of process is going on, we basically like like responsible or like if something happened because I mean because we keep developing, so we we I will feel this kind of responsibility. And once the network is released, we basically uh, like we will sleep much more better like when when it happened. And in terms of like pre mine uh, tokens. There is also like important to understand um, like the bigger picture here. Um, so we uh, like we do development of Incognito uh, like two years, a little bit more than two years already. Uh, we are like fully self-funded. We didn't raise uh, uh, any kind of money. We didn't go on like any exchanges. We didn't make hype like noise around. From our point of view, the most interesting was. Uh, to find a problem and try to build solution for this problem before we can make any kind of noise. Again, because we come like from the software, like e-commerce, for example, um, uh, like like founder, one of founders of the Incognito is uh, like his name, Dui. Um, he, he is Vietnamese who was born in Vietnam. He win um, um, like uh, computer science Olympic games. Uh, then he went to US, he become PhD student when he was uh, 19 years old he got grant from nasa basically like super smart guy uh before incognito he uh, like launched e-commerce company which uh, uh like right now evaluated like nearly one billion dollars basically in terms of like 
to I'm trying to say that we come here not like to make money like on this, but um, uh, try to like challenge ourselves, find a problem, and try to solve this problem. And the questions uh, like you like point on the beginning is actually showing me that there's a lot of more problems which we need to to solve before we 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 should release. So and then coming back to this five million, so basically uh, like we like estimated that okay from. Uh, like the the two years like expenses which we handle from the pocket, it will be fair just to have pre mined. So nearly it's like five percent of total supply, which um, like same like uh, Nakamoto like uh, approximately like mine it for himself. Um, but from this point of view, we can just make um, like some kind of official statement that we don't like we just lock these funds, uh, like nobody use it, and then we're not going to like run notes from them. Uh, because again, if we run nodes, if we keep the network, it's a um, point to attack on like this particular guy or like on because we do like privacy network. So this is um, like controlling network is a point of attack. Our goal is um, like to release it uh, and uh, like as soon as possible and uh, just to be sure that it's stable before we just uh, go to let it to the community. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the answer there. Um, and then last question on funding. I noticed they all have a, a DAO fund that's pulled from the block reward, starting at I think ten percent, and then going all the way down to two or one percent over the next few years. Um, how is that currently? Like, how is that funding currently used, or is it currently used? And then long term, how will that be used to keep supporting the incognito network mm -hmm. past the pre mine and and as the mm -hmm. network grows? Uh, yeah, so basically we use, we use that fund, uh, uh, like, mm, so we have a team of uh, like 40 members, uh, which we like, so 40 members maybe is like for the last year and a half before it was a little bit less, but we basically run this team. So uh, from this DAO fund, we have um, some kind of like PRV salary, which we uh, pay to every developer. So everyone uh, feel the, the, the ownership of this but usually it's not uh, i mean just uh, uh to um, to be clear so the uh, the dow fund for the first year is uh, nearly 750 000, uh prv uh, and then which we plan to like uh, to spread like as a salary like nearly like half of this amount during the, the first year and then another half uh, we um, uh, pay uh, like some kind of grants to uh, uh, outside developers uh, so currently we have a, a bunch of developers, people who uh, build in like web version of wallet, who build desktop wallets, uh, who uh, like build in uh, like web version of incognito DEXs and so on and so on. And then another part is like go to, to these people. Okay, awesome. Thank you. I, I have one, I guess, clarified question on on the way that the, the issuance and staking works. Not Not necessarily... And the reason this clarification is just because I'm personally sensitive to the idea that you have uh, like a a proof of stake coin where a certain amount is either pre-mined by someone or is going, you know, specifically allocated to, you know, a specific entity. Just to set an example, like suppose every every month or year for, for every issuance of a block or whatever, 10% went to a specific fund. Mm -hmm. And if the recipient of that money stood like staked those funds, they would not just get the 10% they were allocated, but they'd also get a 10% weight in the amount that's supposed to be for everyone else on paper. Right. So they then would have 10% of that amount plus their 10%. It basically just like grows um, because they're able to stake better than everyone else. So Seth mentioned that you had specific slots in the network. Are those uh, slots that you use to stake or are they like just governance slots? Or I guess, can you distinguish between these two? Because I'm just not very familiar. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just just to make sure that, that I understand. So basically the first concern is that uh, the core team might utilize the, these coins to stake own nodes and then just get more like bigger part of the network. Yeah, so I guess the, that's the first question. The second question is when you need, like, in order to have the infrastructure you need in order to deploy the contracts you would like to on the network, I mean, it does create, of course, a, a relatively centralized situation, which I think we, we, we all have 
mentioned. Um, but um, in doing so, in order to have this network control, does that also require that you stake? Um, still, I'm not sure if I, if I got. So let, let them maybe like share you like how, how it, it is okay. like right now. And then uh, like maybe we, so basically we have um, uh, like the, the currently, I actually yesterday we had the like monthly call also with uh, Incognito community and I was reporting our like progress for the past month. Uh, and uh, I just report that we cross uh, 2,100 nodes uh, inside uh, uh, like in the, which power in the network. Uh, we have like like distributed proof of stake when every node uh, has equal probability. Uh, the uh, entry level into the node is uh, quite low, so you need like 1,750 PRV to become validator. So it's um, much lower like barrier like for like compared like to, to, to other networks. So this is the first thing. Basically, we already attract like nearly uh, like 2,000 nodes. I cannot tell that there is uh, like 2000 people like that everyone run one node but um, I can definitely tell that there is like nearly um, like nearly 500 or like 600 like people who has no idea about each other and who is like distributed around the world and they they join us they accept this kind of uh, uh, like commitment that we like release the network uh, like nearly like middle of the next year and then like in the moment when it's released they basically the, their reward like will be increasing so they accept mm -hmm. this and they, they wait for this moment um from the fixed slots part is basically the the way how it works um, um let's say we have uh, 300 nodes which uh, uh, make decision so they they choose into the committee every four hours choosing like randomly from uh, from that pool um, and basically, if like let's say from these three hundred nodes, uh, like sixty percent is like like fixed, which we uh, which we run, and then uh, like, like nearly forty percent is just go uh, like chosen from the community nodes, and then just get reward. And um, from this point, again, we because these nodes participate in every uh, porch and they earn reward, but. Um, um, so the first important thing that we not use these uh, coins like to run more nodes because it doesn't make sense. I mean, if if Incognito run um, like own network, no one else will be joining the network. There will be not actually interesting for anyone. And um, um, yeah, like from this space. So basically, there is it's it's also quite simple. Let's say if we keep, if we keep the slots like during the month, then approximately the uh, like the company foundation should like receive during this year like let's say I don't know like three like four mils PRV, and then we use this PRV because we have DEX, uh, we need to pay like incentives. Basically, we use this pool and put the part on uh, like paying back incentives to the validators to the liquidity providers. Oh, sorry, not validators to the liquidity providers. Uh, like currently on the index, we have like $8 million uh, locked in the liquidity. And uh, part of this like fixed slots we use like to distribute uh, like reward to the users. And the cool thing of this that um, uh, it, it's not cool, but it's like right now on the, under the discussion. Basically, what's going on right now? We run fixed slots, we get the tokens and we distribute it to the liquidity providers. And we are thinking about uh, like new way of implementation where... Uh, like this kind of um, like block reward can go directly to the liquidity providers, which can be uh, something like really like I hope it's going to be like some kind of revolutionary because uh, we might make the network upgrade when uh, the network itself can fund DAO, the network can fund uh, liquidity providers. So you don't need to have any like uh, like useless governance token. You don't need to create any kind of token to make the kind of farming, but the network itself will incentivize people to keep the liquidity and again like for our priorities like bitcoin monero and decentralized stable coins like, which we feel like the most <laughs> and then we also think about that the third part it's actually custodians so we we want to launch network of decentralized custodians who will maintain cross-chain bridges and we also thinking that we probably should took like part of block reward because again currently we take the, the funds from these fixed slots and then manually distribute like to this kind of people. 
but there is a way when it can come directly from block reward and be distributed. So um, this is just like high level plan, which we like, want to like, I personally like want to like move community and everyone to this direction. Right now we are discussing about to upgrade like like block reward split. And then if everyone accept, so it incognito might become the first network which fund itself in decentralized way, uh, validator, liquidity providers, uh, decentralized custodians, and development itself. So okay. This, this, this is ideal scenario. This is where we go, but it's not uh, like like this right now. Okay. So just to, just to clarify, at the, at the moment, um, like you do have these slots that you are using to stake, but you're using those stakes on, shall I describe community incentives or you know liquidity incentives? Um, okay. Okay. Um, Seth, did you have any other clarifying questions? Or I did have one about uh, I had one about um, the shards, um, but if you have another clarifying one on anything that's more like related to issuance or something, probably best to get that out now. No, go for that real quick, and then I'll I'll go for a question afterwards. Okay, sure. So you, as far as I understand, Incognito like is still a pretty small mm-hmm. network, right? Like you you started you know about just under a year ago, I guess, very close to a year, uh, but sharding. You know, typically is an op, you know a, a solution of, of sorts that people recommend or, or start to recommend or at least toy ideas around with when the network gets larger, when you have all these components you need to keep track of. So why did Incognito prioritize trying to focus on sharding, which um, like hasn't really been implemented much in, in larger networks? Uh, and, and then why did you choose to do eight shards so far? Um. I mean, the first part, like why we choose sharding instead of uh, like other implementation? Yeah, like wh- why did your small network at the moment, right? You don't have a uh, blockchain of like, you don't have a heavy blockchain, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I imagine it's probably not huge. Why did you like rush to implement sharding as a feature you really wanted? Then what was the reason for eight shards mm-hmm. instead of any mm-hmm. other number? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually... Um, uh, the eight charts is uh, it, it was we were like thinking on the beginning like to do uh, to kick start with four, uh, but then we so we we wanted firstly like test it out. We wanted to learn like deeper like what kind of like issue problems can uh, we can face with two charts, for example. Uh, Basically, it's like for the, the reason why eight, just like for like experimenting to test it out, like to crash it out, uh, like uh, and so on, and so on. Mm. And then, in oh, okay, maybe there was like another reason. Uh, in that time when we like uh, were deciding, there was um, some like couple blockchain startups like uh, like, like Harmony or some proof of stake public blockchain startups which aim to like ra- like launch four shards uh, so we like thought that maybe we should just try it <laughs> just to, just I mean, it's not yeah yeah so th- there is no there is no demand reason for this uh, so currently uh, we have um, like nearly 3000 transactions in the network per day and it's not comparable with monero 3000 transaction monero is like pure like transfers in incognito 3000 transaction is a uh, uh, transfer like shielding, cross chain, uh, PDEX, trade, uh, uh, some kind of like inside request. So basically, um, do Coinbase, have... um, does mining a Coinbase transaction to a wallet address count as by a transaction? Uh, so the mint, minting uh, P coin, it counts like the transaction of like. And, and then when you do cross chain, basically on, on the public uh, chain, it's not count on our, but uh, when it's locked and when um, it, like it's triggered to create P coin for you, uh, it's it counts as transaction as well. I think Doug's question was like, if you just mined an empty, empty block, for example, or, or I guess validated empty block, would that count as a transaction? Is I think what he's getting at. Yeah, you got that. No, no, no the, the block itself, uh, I mean, uh, the block itself not, but we have like nearly 40 types of transactions currently. Um, again, because basically it's the same transaction happening on the network, but we mark it based on uh, uh, like in what kind of like product it's uh, like related. 
So minting, like burning, uh, minting coin, burning coin, uh, transferring coin, uh, like transferring Bitcoin, like created on this, uh, like trading, uh, sending trend, trade request, uh, receiving trade request. Uh, then we also impl- we, we tested out like privacy for Uniswap, try to bring privacy layer o- o- on top of like Uniswap. And basically, so we have a, uh, no, okay, it's a long story. Maybe <laughs> we can get to that one later if we have time. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Yeah. But yeah, even like if, if you execute trade on like uni- privately in Uniswap, it's one type transaction. If you do trade on Incognito Dex, it's different type of like marked off different type of transaction. But technically, it's just transaction inside the network. Okay, so is there anything else on sharding that you wanted to explain too? Um, or did you cover? I think um, you, you mentioned you you wanted sharding partially because you wanted to take on the technical challenge of it. And also you chose eight because someone else is doing four and you're like, you know, let's try it. Uh, is that, I mean, a, no, is that a good summary? No, there's a bunch of other contexts that I missed no, there. The, 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 I think like the most important is just uh, uh, so we just try to scale it like from from day one to uh, a transaction, also to a charts. Uh, a charts also give us um, uh, like give us possibility to uh, have like hundred TPS. Uh, I I don't know. It was just like. This is okay. This one, let's say if we run like eight, eight charts, if it's uh, going well, that like if we grow like uh, steadily, like within the next couple of years, we just handle uh, um, this kind of capacity. So, that, I mean, um, I, I cannot tell you like <laughs> anything else here, but um, well, it'll, it'll be interesting to see from our perspective how the network uh, stability maintains with the different shards because I don't know many people that are at least. I don't often speak to with people that are trying to do sharding. <laughs> so I mean, to, I I would really ask. I don't know if uh, like someone technical from like Monero community will uh, watch this video. Uh, I would like highly recommend just uh, jump in our forum, and uh, like we could discuss with our like technic. I mean, with our like leads, with the people who design and and launch this. I mean, I I'm uh, I. I graduated like physical university, like I have like master of physics, but um, uh, obviously I'm not like the best technical person to to dive like. But we have like so many talents, so I it's it's my request for like anyone who watched this video, just like jump in and uh, try to make our life harder. With, uh... <laughs> so I, I appreciate that, uh, Seth. What other question? I think you wanted to change topics here. Yeah, just a little bit, um, especially for people that are watching this that may want to start playing around with the PDEX, maybe even provide liquidity. Um, can you just give like a quick rundown on what risks people should be aware of for both providing liquidity mm-hmm. and for just trading on the PDEX? Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, there's like the DEX itself, it works as uh, AMM uh, base uh, decentralized exchange like Uniswap. Uh, Etc. So basically, there is uh, from one side there's liquidity providers, from another side like traders who execute. Um, so I think like from traders' perspective, uh, um, probably like the risk are like m- minimum. I don't know. Just uh, you just come trade and and go. Uh, the risks probably here is like when uh, when you do like cross chain transaction, it might fail. Uh, then you like just need to retry and, and so on and so on. Uh, then um, I think yeah maybe like from this point like the most risk is that uh, uh, the bridge to Monero is like uh, still like custodian. Uh, like basically we have um, like trustless non-custodial uh, bridge to uh, Ethereum, so we like quite uh, comfortable with that. Uh, nearly in terms of Ethereum we have like nearly four million uh, US dollars in assets. In terms of Bitcoin, we also have like nearly four million uh, US in liquidity pool for Bitcoin, uh, and that part's like like uh, uh, trustless. From uh, uh, Monero part, it's still trusted, and uh, the the current amount of assets on Incognito is like nearly two hundred thousand US dollars. Uh, like there are like two thousand uh, XMR 
I think I was like ch- like checking previously. Okay. Um, so and then I think like the most uh, uh, the the point of like uh, like attack is actually the bridge, like a Estonian bridge. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, like until we keep um, like maintaining the network, we just uh, taking the like responsibility of this. Um, in th- so and then in terms of let's say if if you're not maintaining a bridge, uh, if you're not providing liquidity, if you just want to come and trade your XMR to BTC or XMR to USDT or to ATH, uh, you just come swap uh, and then you can probably like go if you don't if you don't want or you don't trust or like you feel that we're like too small or you just wait until we like release the network. So we we totally okay from this. Uh, the only thing we are interesting um, uh, um, for people just to come and and try. So we believe in terms of like uh, like user experience, we we bring. Um, Mm, we bring like really good uh, uh, product for user. Like it should, it's much more uh, like useful. It's easier. Um, like it's friendly. So from our point of view, again, uh, just b- bigger picture. Uh, we didn't start like doing like trustless bridge uh, itself, and then just try to make like PR about trustless bridge. What we did, we we did like trusted bridge. We did like MVP. We bring Monero to the PDX. And we testing with users. If we feel the demand, um, like users bring liquidity, users bring DEX, we like put more effort and just uh, thinking about like the the bridge v2, the bridge v2, and some kind of improvement. Uh, this is part from the traders. Then part for the liquidity providers. Um, so uh, currently there's like two ways to provide liquidity. Uh, basically, the first one if uh, is like uh, it's decentralized. It's like same way as on Uniswap when you have uh, two coins. Uh, when you uh, provide these two coins uh, in one time, uh, and then you uh, control like private key of this. You can um, you can provide liquidity. You can remove liquidity any moment of time. Uh, the bottleneck here is that. Um, uh, like it's required you to have two coins, and the second coin like must be like PRV, which is not convenient for um, for like most of the users. It's exactly the same reason because blockchain is new. Uh, there is no like that many coins uh, like on the network, and so on, so on. So then, uh, like after communication with community, we figure out uh, to bring some kind of um, improvements on this. So we launch new feature which calls provide. Uh, when you can uh, like stake your XMR or Bitcoin, uh, and then we will um, march uh, this uh, XMR uh, with PRV, which uh, again come like from this pool, like fixed slots pool, and we just like march this merge this liquidity, uh, and then um, like as a user, as liquidity provider, you don't feel um, you don't, you don't have needs to have PRV to provide liquidity at this point, but the, the bottleneck of this point again because uh, this implementation it has uh, like backend functionality which require uh, too much like funds from uh, from from different pools so that's that's probably like risk for liquidity provider uh, again because we are aware of this risk because like community like give us feedback uh, we do work on implementation which we call speedx v2 uh, when we take um, this decentralized uh, two ways liquidity and uh, this like half centralized like one way liquidity and merge uh, into one function uh, when users will be able to provide liquidity uh, only in one side uh, in decentralized way like directly to the PDX and if uh, everyone agree um, these incentives will come directly from the block reward uh, so we 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 working on implementation the PDX v2 which will come uh, beginning of next year. Uh, with all these functionalities and incentives, and again, the goal the goal is not uh, to have the DEX itself, but uh, any kind of centralized point is vector to attack on us as a team, as like developers, and our goal itself is just like uh, uh, to release as faster as possible. So one question that comes out of that as a liquidity provider, I've done a little bit with Uniswap um, and played around with them and just tried to learn how. Um, impermanent loss works as a liquidity provider there? Is that still a risk for liquidity providers in the incognito decks or is that done away with somehow? Mm-hmm. 
Um, so if you uh, like, if you use uh, the first way, which is that centralized when you provide both coins, uh, yeah, then of course, like you experience the Im impermanent loss. Uh, but if you like use uh, the, the second version of functionality, which require one coin, um, as a user, you not experience impermanent loss, but uh, it's still uh, on the fundamentals is the same functionality, and this impermanent loss. It covers like from um, like this from the foundation funds. Hmm. So okay. uh, right now, I, I would say like right now we are like on on the transition for decentralized way when you provide both coins to a decentralized way when you can provide only one coin. And we are like currently here. We are like half of the way, maybe even more than half of the way already. Um, and uh, um, if you like uh, allow me, I would uh, bring like when we launch this kind of thing. I think it's going to be like very like revolutional part, like from our point of view. And um, I will definitely bring it to the like Monero Reddit and like we'll share with uh, uh, with everyone once it's ready. Yeah, I definitely want to keep up to date on that. And I'll just for anybody who's watching who doesn't know what impermanent loss is or hasn't really played around with Uniswap. Basically, the concept is that if you're providing liquidity to a pool, you have half in one side of the pool. So like for this, it'd be PRV and then half would be XMR. And if the price difference between those two assets changes, either positively or negatively, your uh, liquidity provision, you've essentially lose money. So your short liquidity, I mean, your short... Um, volatility if you're providing liquidity in a pool like that and it, there's there's a lot involved so if you're curious about liquidity provision in general especially for uniswap style dexes like the p dex i would definitely recommend having reading up on that book, having the orders on the book is providing an option to anybody who wants to go and take them and mm -hmm. so it's while the order is up it's a you're offering put and call options to anybody who's looking at the decks single single taker but like that time differential's killer especially when you have to place orders that resolve on a blockchain in order to do it like that that delta can significantly impact your bottom line as a market maker yeah and there's definitely there's a lot of math that's involved if you are wanting to do liquidity provision where impermanent loss is still involved and so impermanent loss will still apply in pdex v2 i'm assuming because you're still going to be using the amm the Uniswap I AMM don't, I don't think curve. You can get around it. Yeah, not with an AMM. That's kind of the core of how they function. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Andre. And, and I, I mean, if we start this discussion related to to the the DEX, uh, if you don't mind, I would just uh, ask you also like some some things here. Um, oh, like, the Minor community is not absolutely. really experts on, 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 on Uniswap, but we're, we're happy to answer whatever we can. Yeah. <laughs> from, my point, uh, from my point of view, like, like the, the technical thing right now, but I mean, for me, I'm more interesting to understand, uh, uh, like, if you guys trade your XMR, uh, how, like, frequent, like, usually you trade, and which tool do you use? Just it's, for me, it's some kind of like um, insight from people who hold and use it. I think the three of us on here probably aren't too big of traders. I don't think there's definitely that side of the Monero community. Um, I mean, I'm only of, the model of the trading subreddit. It's yeah. not like <laughs> yeah, we kind of we kind of separate great. them off. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I will say for me personally, I've kind of used. The whole gamut of what's available which i mean there's not a ton because there's not really a decentralized exchange for monero until incognito um, and i have used the the pdex to swap some xmr just to play around with um and then obviously centralized exchanges have used those and then there's tools like local monero and bisc where you can do mm -hmm. decentralized exchanges but they're not in the same fashion as the pdex or uniswap or atomic mm -hmm. swaps that kind of thing um I, 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 I think just to say like one, th this is probably related to your question, but isn't like exactly directly answering it. Um, but when it comes to the whole providing liquidity aspect, it is better user experience to not have to buy a different asset and then provide the same equal amount on both sides in my experience. Like it just is intuitively simpler as a user. Like I just want to provide someone with my Monero and I want my Monero to be safe. And I want to 
earn interest on that. Now, granted, I know that at the moment, there certainly are a bunch of asterisks and it's like, well, it's in a custodial wallet. And you, well, it's this and the wallet's that. And so it's not like a, a no risk deposit, but uh, that's what the user experience probably should look like in my opinion is just, you know, take my one asset, figure out how it works. Even if someone takes a small cut on it or something that like it's understandable from a user experience perspective. Um, and if someone wanted to go through advanced features, they could go through and directly provide that liquidity the way it, it's, it would work for an advanced user. So I, I like, I do like that the simpler liquidity provider option is available I think from most users' perspectives, especially Monero users that probably have never thought of providing liquidity to a Uniswap style DEX, it it makes more intuitive sense. And I will say just overall, as far as trading goes, it seems like there's been a, a very high demand for atomic swap research. So I think that there is a there is a serious need and demand in the Monero community for a truly decentralized way to trade. Um, across chains Mm -hmm. and obviously like we've been talking about like there are still pieces in the current incognito network that are centralized or focused on being a little more centralized now to maintain the network and are going to transition so i think like right now that may not be exactly what people are looking for but i think the goals that you have in mind are a good fit for a lot of what i've seen as highly in demand from monero users Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone's yeah, I mean, interested. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and and this this is the also interesting thing. Like, if uh, if you guys like have um, like any like research researcher groups like uh, which works in some kind of interoperability uh, things, uh, that's we also definitely like interesting to to jump in just to talk about ideas. Uh, like, basically, we have um, uh, like we have like twenty developers. And we experiment in in different directions. So we have um, like we have dedicated team which focus on research uh, in terms of how to make uh, like trustless communication between um, incognito Bitcoin and incognito Monero networks. It's like is like the biggest challenge. And uh, uh, like once this uh, problem is solved, like I mean the, the DEX is application layer is quite easy. So we have like we're like on the on the way on the roadmap, we just uh, pretty sure that it, it it will be like trustless, uh, like decentralized. There is no thing, no question. But in terms of cross chain communication, I have like strong feelings that uh, in the next year is like going to be like one of the main uh, like problem most of the, like researchers focus on, and including us as well. So, and uh, um, like during the past eleven months, we basically we built. Um, uh, like three types of different bridges. So we're also trying to to get like more experience in terms of uh, like improving the bridges, how to make it trustless, how to make it connected, and so on, so on. So we we definitely into and we really interesting to uh, to make it happen. Yeah, I would definitely recommend as you're doing research there or building out tools for interacting with the Monero network um, to reach out in IRC either to just the base. Monero channel, or there's also the Monero-research-lab channel. Um, and there's going to be more researcher-focused people in that channel specifically. But um, I'm sure people would love to at least take a look at what you're doing and then obviously help if, as they have time and mm-hmm. as they're interested. But mm-hmm. Okay, thanks. Um... So uh, on a related topic, of course, is security, like the elephant in the room is really the custody of the assets, right? So I know with with certain certain coins you support, there's some other non direct custody as you know way that that people are able to provide. But I know with Monero at the moment, you are taking full custody over every Monero that someone deposits in order to turn it into PXMR, correct? Um, so can you talk about what security practices you take there in order to make sure that? Um, you know, the Monero that you're holding for other users is staying secure. Are you using a third-party custodian? Are these in a hot wallet or a cold wallet somewhere? I guess, like, what are you doing? Uh, like, so, th- th- but the first thing is actually we we'll, um, uh, we we keep working on this um, uh, like the the third version of Bridge when which will be uh, collateralized. 
So the uh, the, the first um, insurance which we give to the users who bring uh, uh, like XMR uh, coins into the incognito is actually over collateralization of uh, this um, like assets. Uh, so but sorry, before we get to talk about like the idea of having other users over collateralized to, to hold custody of no, Monero. No, yeah, I got, I got what you mean. Yeah. So, uh, for, even like, even when we like, uh, we, we are custody itself, uh, we basically like, uh, uh, like, let's say some kind of have reserve like funds uh, to like cover like the, the risks itself. So we, we accept this. Uh, then uh, in terms of like security, basically, um, I mean, we have like we have the like dedicated person uh, who is like uh, like the, the founders of the project, which has access to the uh, like to the wallet when this is like stored. So basically, it's um, so currently. Just again to be clear, so currently there is like uh, two thousand XMR. Uh, it based on. Uh, like it, it remains on the the hot wallet, which is uh, stored like in 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 the founders, so, and then founders like responsible for uh, for the funds. Of this. All right, so so I guess that 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 what you said is is a is definitely a little worrisome, and not what we typically describe as like a best practice. I know it's 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 new, um, but when 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 you process withdrawals, for example, if if I have my Monero that's currently sitting as, as PXMR want to convert that to normal XMR. Like who in your team processes that withdraw? How does it happen? Is mm. it, it, does it require your founder to be the person that's like the only person with access to the wallet that's just manually approving all these or how does that go? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, so the, 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 this, this person just like, keep only like, like private key, but uh, we have uh, um, basically we implemented basic bridge functionality when um like deposit and withdrawal uh like request uh like sign the the transaction so it, it's going automatically basically there is no the founder is not not clicking each time so do they have uh do they like have their own private key or something i'm, I'm can, or do they have a copy of the private key i guess i'm so, confused. Oh, so is there a hot wallet with all of the monero in it that is always active and connected to the internet so that it can process and sign withdrawals is uh, is that what you're saying there no there there's not uh, like one wallet there's um each time when you uh shield like deposit monero it generates like new wallet for for each user in this point Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe I think uh, in the best like uh, option here is like to uh, ping some of our like for the, of the guy like who breed uh, who build that uh, bridge. Okay. So I guess I we, we I guess we're a little cons. I mean, <laughs> custody of course is a really difficult topic, and that's why there are companies out there that that provide these type of solutions. Uh, several I know at least at least one, because I know like I've, I've communicated with them before that do offer like Monero custody solutions where it would require several approvals for people before it goes out. And, you know, they, they have certain certifications and the like for their own security. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I so guess, let, yeah, let, go ahead. Let just, um, uh, I will just publish a link to the like proper explanation under this video. So I think, uh, it, it, it might, um, the answer on uh, all questions related to this. Okay. I yeah. Feel I, I, I feel that I might be like a little bit, uh, uh, not, not clear here. Okay. Yeah. It would be good to have really full clarification on these because if it is like, if, if the user's funds are in a, a, a hot wallet, really anywhere, that's it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's relatively worrisome. Right. <laughs> so, um, we just want to make sure that we're careful of that. So if, if you could provide us with the details on that, that'd be really great. We can make sure we have a better chance to evaluate those uh, in, in, in further detail. Um, so I guess we can move on then to the, the your, your desired future implementation of uh, instead of you holding collateral over the funds directly, instead you... How about I try and summarize it and then I'll, I'll head it over to you to make sure that I got it correctly. So the idea is instead of one person specifically holding the funds, 
you allow other users to essentially pitch the idea of being custody providers. They say, hey, I'm willing to custody your Monero for you. I'm a random person. But in order to give you assurance that I'm not going to just, you know, completely try and screw you over, I'm going to post either a basket of assets or an asset or, you know, something as collateral. Um, and the value of the collateral that I'm providing exceeds the value of the Monero that you are asking uh, to hold. Um, so I guess first, is that is that uh, an, an appropriate description? Um, I, I think, yeah, it's like in the high level, it uh, looks like this. Uh, so idea again, just um, uh, to 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 confirm that um, I will publish like proper answer in terms of like custody because uh, there is um, like quite a lot of wallets. I mean, each time it's like generate like new wallet. So this one I will uh, clarify for sure in terms of decentralized custodian. Yeah, so the imp- implementation is uh, like users say that I want to be custodian. Here is my funds. I lock it as uh, insurance. Uh, for uh, uh, this uh, like funds to be a return uh, and then um, by incentivizing this user like so each ty- each type of like uh, cross chain transaction happen uh, it, like it will require uh, like to pay uh, like children and children fee which goes back to this user as incentive and the second incentive for the user to be a custodian uh, which uh, gonna come like from the the block reward and the, the current implementation we have uh, right now, you can, um, if you want to be custodian, you can uh, use only like PRVS collaterals, which is uh, gives us like very like huge limitations in terms of uh, like how much value we can bring into the network. Uh, and currently, we work on the like implementation. We call it like Portal V3, uh, which allow um, like user to lock any kind of uh, Ethereum-based assets, um, so it's just like Ether, Stablecoin, uh, or like the, the wrapped uh, like Bitcoin, whatever. And that um, uh, decentralized bond contract, it will be uh, like deployed on uh, uh, Ethereum network. And then, like, let's say if there's case of liquidation happen, it's also going to happen on like Ethereum DEXs. And then that kind of implementation. Um, Actually, will allow us like to scale uh, like in inflow outflow across the networks like maybe like ten times or so. Uh, yeah, that's the implementation we currently work. But I also feel that it's not the last one uh, which we built. We so we are like diving now right now also in research of like Ren protocol. Uh, how do they? Uh, I mean, they they design it like from the high level. It sounds interesting, but I still didn't get uh, in terms of um, like decentralization part, if if so. Uh, but if if it's that cool as it's designed, uh, we would probably even try to implement something um, like similar way when you collateralize like, uh, for example, in Ren they collateralize uh, like they have collaterals nearly twenty million dollars, but they have bitcoins uh, like on their bridge like nearly two hundred millions. Um, that might be like next generation of the bridge. But okay, yeah, I have, back to custodians, yeah. you are right. Yeah. Okay. I have two questions then on, on how the, the custody option would work. So, or I guess more the collateral option would work. As a user, will I be able to say that I am a okay with fun? Actually, I actually want to save that for the second question. Actually, first question. Um, when you, a user is providing the assets, as, or the collateral assets, are these in a like a P token or are they in the native like BTC token? Um, so uh, let's say the portal v, v, V2, uh, the current version which we use uh, like for Bitcoin, uh, it uh, requires only like P tokens, P coins like PRV. Uh, but the portal V3, which uh, come in uh, end of like November, like within two months, um, that one allows you to put in uh, Ethereum-based assets. Okay, so, so you can use anything built on Ethereum. Ethereum. Really. Okay, and then can I say the second question as a user, like, 
Suppose I am concerned about the potential downfall risk of any of those assets that you would support. Let's say it's Ethereum, just to be simple, right? Say, say I'm really bearish on Ethereum. I think that there may be a flash crash in Ethereum. It might drop to literally nothing, right? And so I don't think that that's a, an appropriate uh, collateral, really at whatever percentage, you know, 110, 600%, say I'm a, a user that won't even take 600% collateral, right? Would I be able to say, I do not want ETH. I only want to accept uh, USDC as collateral. And I, I want, yeah, I, I, like I only want to take USDC as collateral. That's the only thing I'll accept. Um, you mean as uh, as custodian, as pro custodian provider, or as a user which uh, used the the bridge? Correct. So, so if I'm a, if I'm a user that would like to deposit Monero uh, with a custodian mm. um, in order to turn it into PXMR, am I able to specify that I only want to deal with the custodian that provides collateral in a specific asset? Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I got what you mean. So, uh, yeah, uh, currently, no, no, it 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 will not be possible uh, to choose uh, like the the types of um, custodians you you're gonna use. So does it? Yeah. So I guess what what current ass do you support any asset like any ERC twenty is something that you just take the value? I guess. So how do you? How do you determine what can be counted as collateral or what can be included as collateral mm -hmm. and um, what, you know, over collateralization percent you require? Um, yeah, yeah, I got. Um, so um, th th there will be like predefine it, what kind of assets can be used uh, in this uh, contracts is basically it will be open to for the community to uh, to vote and decide like to bring like any other coins or not. Uh, and the, the mechanism, um, I don't know if you guys are aware about DAI, DAI stablecoin, which, so it's going to be like similar, very similar like mechanism. There will be predefined uh, type of assets which uh, will be able to use as uh, collaterals. Uh, and then uh, um, as a user, you will not be able to uh, know uh, who is your collateral and what kind of assets he put there. Uh, but you will... Um, have like guarantee that there's like 200 percent of uh, of like 200 percent more than you like transfer like right now for example so as, as a user well i guess first question when it comes to the the baskets of collateral would each asset have its own required percentage uh of, over collateralization let's let's say ethereum is something people feel more safe with than bat I, I don't know these are two examples right so would you say a user who provides eth might be able to collateralize at 120 percent, but for bat you want more like 170 is that something you can and will do or is that like uh yeah exactly so for stable coins it's going to be like um, like much much slower maybe for okay. stable coins like nearly 120 uh for coins like uh, which can be fluctuated like ethereum um, it might be like nearly 200 percentage maybe less it's also we i mean we um, like once we launch uh, we will put like high uh, uh, over collateralization rate uh, but then we will like see based on demand and like possibly like to make some kind of upgrades uh, but like from the beginning from the start it's going to be uh, like the only like stable coins and maybe ethereum and like robbed btc and not like other like ERC20 coins, which is uh, like highly volatile, like right now. So on the beginning, again, our point here is uh, to launch this version to make sure it's like stable, uh, to make sure it works, and then uh, like understand how much we can we scale it, um, and so on, so on. And uh, is a user able to at any time, or will they be able to at any time, find out what specific assets and liabilities there are for? Like these, you know, but like there's this much in collateral and these are the specific assets in collateral and there are these many liabilities in these assets. Like, is, is that public information or who has access to that information? Mm, uh, so let's say if we're talking about the, the Ethereum uh, part of this, so it will be uh, like bond smart contract, uh, which uh, all these assets will be locked. Uh, so like from the public uh, side of Ethereum, there will be... A, uh, possible to see, let's say, that incognito, uh, like, bridge smart contracts. Let's say incognito, if we use this imp implementation for Monero. like So basically, every bridge will have um, particular uh, smart contract. 
so okay. it's not all bridges into the one so it will be like uh like one bridge like one smart contract and then um again this is additional flexibility which we have uh, we can even decide let's say if we use um this bridge for monero we can uh check with monero community what kind of assets should be used like for as collaterals and then we can probably define okay for this particular bridge like we accept only like stable coins then community feels safe everyone feels safe yeah uh but in terms of like visibility um, people who go to ethereum like explorer they will see that on this smart con contract is like this amount of collaterals uh and uh, like these collaterals come from from this user very cool maybe also like important here like why we call it decentralized custodians is basically uh because that from the public side uh you can only notice that a lot of collaterals come uh to the smart contract uh, but there is no way to link that um uh some like xmr like come like to incognito network for example in, okay. in this point is like Okay, it's it's. I actually do think it's interesting that you have a different contract per uh, per bridge. I think that it actually is pretty cool because you can treat certain more risk aggressive communities, let's say, uh, with you know higher number of options and more conservative risk take. You know, far less risk taking communities that that only want it to be like super super safe and are only okay with like certain things to. Um, to be able to have better control over that. I do think that is actually pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions on the, the collateralization? I think I only have, like, basic questions about, uh, you know, compliance and the like left. All right. So, this, you know, I, I'm not sure to what extent you can answer some of these, but but you are currently, you know, holding user funds and you provide, uh, you know, some high degree of network validation in order to allow users to conduct transactions on your network. Um, are you concerned about offering US users access to the platform? Like, are, do you feel comfortable accepting US user funds like in Monero that you hold collateral over? And um, I guess what, what compliance requirements do you feel at a high level at least are, are necessary on your end? Um. That's like some kind of like tricky, <laughs> tricky things. Um, so I definitely not comfortable uh, getting the user uh, getting any kind of money from like US people. It's like uh, any any kind of um, things like this. It uh, I don't know. Like there's there's like last case with Bitmax. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, it's it's definitely like uh, something I'm not uh, like going to do. I don't want to have like any relations with them. And this is like another reason why we try to push it uh, to make it decentralized faster. Um, like because we don't want to point like ourselves to be this like vector. Um, uh, so fr from this point of view, uh, we not uh, um, I don't know like we do not work with like. Uh, I mean, there's also like difficult to understand how how there's how to link, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, I don't know, like the person like me, for example. I I have uh, like ideas. I'm like working on tokenomic. I'm thinking how to uh, how to make the network uh, self like sustainable, like during the next twenty years when it will be. Uh, uh like when the network itself reward validators the network reward liquidity providers the network reward custodians without like my kind of input so in this point my goal is to launch the network which will be um self-sustainable from the compliance part i think so far as i know it's like still legal to launch blockchain networks maybe in the future it will be some, something illegal but uh like our job here is like to launch the network um in terms of this uh, uh like bridging with uh like xmr when uh we hold the uh, funds again we're trying to um, so we're trying to find a way to, like to do it uh um i don't know in, in Basically, uh, to have some kind of functionality when uh, funds is, uh, uh, I don't know, locked on some like kind of wallet and which funds is collateralized um, by other peers. So basically, we try to make this the system 
which of course require us uh, to uh, have uh, like let's say key of this like custodian wallet but how to make it um, not related to um, I don't know like not to be centralized so Mm-hmm. So th- there's like tricky moment in, in terms of like these regulations, and we, um, I don't know how to say we we will not we not dive we we try not go in that direction. We try to not provide like service for like U.S. Uh, citizen, uh, but we uh, build a blockchain network, which probably uh, anyone person in the world can like utilize in, in their needs in this way and this is also like one of the reasons why we like didn't do any kind of like fundraising uh, didn't like bring any investors uh, we don't want to be like involved in this kind of uh, uh, like financial uh, financial part in, in our side like the most interesting like, the technology part uh, but I don't know what what should I what should I be? Oh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not worried about. <laughs> so the, the the goal itself again, um, like from this point, we uh, just to consider like we 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 work on, on the network and we want to make the network like self sustainable in decentralized when um, like remove any kind of like angles pointing into in us. Um, I don't know. Did I answer your question? No, I think you did. I, I think, um, I yeah, I, I see your perspective and, uh, yeah, it's good to have a, I think an answer uh, to that. Um, so I think, um, we didn't really have any other questions. I think we wanted to address. Um, but, uh, I guess Doug and uh, Seth this is your last chance to speak up. If you have nothing. Okay. So um, I would love to talk to their math guy. That's not it. That's not it, you, Andre. You don't need to worry about that one. Uh, <laughs> he, said, he said they would have like their their math person talk chat with uh, chat with us. Oh, it was one of the dev. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm more than happy. Like to I will bring like next time um, uh, the 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 chain lead and the security lead. Then okay. uh, we will guys. We will it would be it would be great to sit down and be like, okay, what can we do to like hide all these numbers from people? Yeah, we'd love to go do a deep dive on that. Yeah, really. It, it, like it, anything where you know, the closer we get to users being able to make a a a, a, a trade in confidence is is good, right? We want to we want to encourage really easy, safe flows there. Mm-hmm. So that's something we I think we we very much share a lot of you know. A lot of interest there. <laughs> um, so I guess, is there anything that you wanted to like end by asking us or, or anything that you would like to say about incognito to the Monero community? Um, no, then I, I think it was quite uh, quite a useful talk. Uh, you, you guys point me like uh, several topics which I uh, like, like floating. Uh, so like I, I definitely need to bring uh, like more expertise in this. And I think for me, it's like very important to like answer these questions, which wasn't clear. So I will bring um, like the proper answer, like below this, uh, like video or post, like whatever it's going to be. Um, and um, and I like like really appreciate this kind of point. You know, like the most important thing for us, uh, again, we like not trying to make. Um, uh, like noise around the pro- product before we have like something like really cool to show, uh, but we need a lot of like feedbacks um, in terms of like what should we do like better, um, like what should we improve. Um, we're just eleven months uh, uh, old. Like next month is going to be anniversary. Uh, I don't know. I I want to invite you guys also like to join. I think we're gonna have some kind of. <laughs> Uh, on online event as well, and um, th- uh, maybe it's going to be even like interesting for you guys because uh, you will be able to talk with um, with our community, basically with the people who like run nodes, who provide liquidity, uh, who build something on top of Incognito, who, who never like we met in person each other, and it's it's really will be useful like to ask like half of questions you ask me to ask them like how they feel about it. Um, we're trying to um, like be public uh, as much as possible, transparent as much as possible, and uh, the, the the goal uh, again, uh, as you like, point to the like regulators and all kind of things. 
just to highlight, we don't have like any goal like to build a like, centralized product which we just keep uh, everything and then manage. Uh, the goal uh, to build a network um, which possibly can solve uh, like big uh, like world problems, but uh, we don't know yet like, what kind of problems. Privacy for sure, <laughs> privacy for sure, but uh, maybe there is some kind of point deeper. I'd hope so. If incognito is the name you chose, right? That the privacy is up there. So good, good to hear. Um, yeah, there's certainly a lot of interest in the Monero community side at having a very easy, safe exchange to other assets. And so any sort of development there is something that I imagine many people will be looking at. And that's part of the reason why uh, we, we felt that it would be useful to have this call is to get people understanding, hey, what is this? We may have heard it on the Monero subreddit or otherwise. Let, let's you know, maybe they wanted some more information. I know that it was very useful for me to have, you know, my questions answered. And uh, I think uh, we all uh, will get a lot out of this too as a Monero community. So thank you so much for being here, Andre. It was really great having you. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll run into each other some other time in the near future. Yeah, thank you very much for for all questions. And um, yeah, Uh, thanks. try, Try out Dex and give us feedback. That's the most important. All right, thank you, Andre. Take care. Bye.